is a 353 acre new estuary that's the largest undertaking in the port's history. This project has been in the works for over 30 years. To put this in perspective, this new estuary is bigger than the Port of Everett Seaport, Naval Station Everett, and all of Waterfront Place combined. This is a huge project. It's so critical for the salmon and the wildlife. It's really taken a lot of innovation and creativity to get us to this point. To give a little history on the site, this land was actually drained and diked for agricultural back in the 1900s. For decades, it fed the community with farming and most recently served as Beringer Farm. In 1993, the port did acquire this land for the future purpose of restoration. The port really knew the value of this land, knew what it meant to our natural resources, and had the foresight to acquire this property and work diligently to get it into its restored state. This is the first time in more than a century that this area is reconnected with the river. There's 4,000 lineal feet of new protective dike for I-5, nine miles of channel to support juvenile salmon, trout, and other species that are critical to our environment. They moved over 33,000 dump truck loads of material to build these channels. It's gonna be exciting how this grows and see how wildlife really returns back to this area. We are now in the middle of what they call a controlled breach. There's four different breach locations. All of our biologists that have been out on site are so impressed with the number of juvenile smelt that have already come back into the Blue Heron Slough channels. This is just such a building block for our salmon, for our orca, and for our wildlife. This sure is a, a proud moment. Port leadership saw the potential to restore this land in the 90s and have worked it towards this goal ever since. From my viewpoint, this project is not only bringing life back to the land and the water, not only helping the salmon survive, but also helping the Colcola H, the orca whale. Habitats like this throughout the Northwest are, are threatened, and uh, the tribes are doing a lot to um, make sure that uh, we, when the opportunity comes that we um, invest in restoration and also protection of ones that still exist. We've been vanguards of our natural resources from time immemorial and we do everything that we can to protect it and it's nice to have others come in and help us with that protection. This is really a defining moment for the port and our community, and it's a prime example of what we are as an organization and what we continue to stand for. The future is only bright for us if we continue to look for ways to work together, support each other, and find ways to restore our natural environment. It's, it's hard to not get emotional, really, with looking out at what, it, what we built. With so many years uh, working on it in the trenches, uh, uh, really a privilege, I think, be involved in, in something like this and actually to, to bring it to this type of a, a fruition. I think it's a great example of when the public and private sectors can work together, uh, we, can, we can make some incredible stuff happen. And it exemplifies, as we've been hearing today, what can be accomplished when partners come together to develop a common vision and then work side by side to realize that vision. The Blue Heron Slough Restoration Project is awesome. Just take a look around and remember that this restored land will be here forever as habitat for salmon and other wildlife. You know, we've all had the pleasure of having the salmon and orca here, but if we don't continue this work, they won't be here for long. According to Native American tradition, the Blue Heron brings messages of self-determination and self-reliance. They represent an ability to progress and evolve, and the long, thin legs of the heron reflect that an individual doesn't need to have great massive pillars to remain stable, but must be able to stand on their own. 
That is exactly what this project will do for our community.